welcome. This uh, reading is from censored number 128, How to Defeat a Conservative, Part 6, by William J. Eisenman, Ph.D. The United States Declaration of Independence states that governments derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. Americans have the right to abolish governments that become destructive of our unalienable rights. Because the Declaration of Independence is a document honoring free thought, it sanctions revolution in the face of tyranny. It doesn't sanction censorship. The United States Supreme Court has certainly been overzealous and tyrannical regarding the obscenity issue. On this issue, the court is in a state of enmity with the United States Constitution. Only a dictatorial Supreme Court would condone, condone obscenity laws. When we censor, we leave out important parts of arguments and statements. Important questions are never answered or brought up. Censorship is suppression, and suppression leads to distortion and flagrant violation of the truth. Censorship can be accomplished in many different ways. We can censor by omission, with the use of half-truths, or by outright suppression. The need to censor suppress or evade the truth is rooted in childhood. In each era of history, the vast majority of us had been conditioned to fear the truth. We learn to be emotionally and intellectually dishonest about nature and our animal needs. Our societal structure today is built on myth and faith and lack of truth. Also, our emotional structures have been geared to accept control as a way of life. We know nothing of self-regulation. We are comfortable with oppressive law and we fear the police. We lack free choice and fear real pleasure and strong emotions. Those who call for censorship usually have disturbed sexual economies. Genital disturbances impel them to seek control over the lives of others. This results in a drive for power Censors are power-oriented people. Censorship is like painting a sunset in monochrome. There's no life, no color. Censorship is a tool of the neurotic. What was censored a hundred years ago is not in most cases censored today simply because some of us in the interim have grown emotionally and evolved enough to understand that censorship is a synonym for prejudice and bigotry. Many of us now understand that all the world's raw material has educational value. Life is a school and events are its curriculum. Sensors interfere with the natural order of growth and evolution. The sensor is a stagnant pool of water, while the rest of us are like clear running brooks. The sensor is emotionally stagnant. By cutting himself off from certain knowledge, the sensor's knowledge of the world is incomplete. His ability to experience life is limited. Those who call for censorship believe that their neighbors are sheep 
and must be shepherded. Who better to be the shepherd, of course, than the censor? The censor is a mini despot. There is no constitutional right to take away an American's right to produce, advertise, sell, or consume any form of literature or video. Some states and localities have taken away these rights from their citizens, but they have no right to do so. The censor has no legal standing. The censor has only mysticism and can only rant about moral decline and the public good. The censor deals with assumptions, hypotheses, and opinions. The censor knows nothing of reality. The censor is a dinosaur. The religious conservative is a dangerous fellow because he finds justification in his religion. To defeat this type of conservative, his religious crutch must be taken away. Their religion must be undermined and shown to be unprovable. This work will give us the tools to do just that. Chapter 4 The FDA versus Wilhelm Reich Censorship is not just limited to government censorship of books, videos, speeches, whatever. Censorship exists on many levels and occurs in many guises. And lurking behind most acts of censorship is the conservative character structure. One of the most despicable acts of censorship was carried out against the scientist Wilhelm Reich in the 1950s. Reich was a student of Sigmund Freud. Reich discovered the life energy, which he called orgone, in the 1930s. Reich wrote about the life energy and how it functioned in the human organism. Reich also discovered that the sexual orgasm was a major regulator of the body's energy and that with proper sexual functioning, a neurotic character structure would not form. Reich found a link between the growth of cancer and the shrinking of the body's autonomic nervous system as a result of pleasure starvation. Because of these and other scientific contributions, the United States Food and Drug Administration spent two million dollars to investigate Wilhelm Reich. In the end, Reich was jailed for contempt of court. The FBI, F, excuse me, FDA, FBI, and CIA intercepted and copied Reich's mail. The FDA thought Reich was a quack and predetermined his guilt. During the trial, both the United States prosecutor and his assistant lied under oath. The FDA's case consisted of selected material, facts quoted out of context, and Reich's books were labeled promotional material for his organ energy accumulator. The organ energy accumulator collected life energy from the atmosphere and used it therapeutically. The FDA labeled the accumulator a sex gadget and called it worthless without adequate testing. The FDA labeled it all a sexy racket. The two judges 
who presided over the Reich trial in its several phases came off as inept and in over their heads. The case was a clear, conservative abuse of power. Reich claimed that the FDA falsified evidence and did not appear in court February 10th, 1954 to answer the complaint. He did answer the complaint by mail, but the judge thought the letter came from a crank. Because Reich failed to appear in court to answer the complaint, a default decree was issued on March 19, 1954. The injunction required the defendants to be perpetually enjoined from discussing accumulators and organ energy. The purpose of the injunction was to stop and interfere with Reich's scientific work and to limit his influence and to destroy his books. This is clear when we learn that the other doctors, the organomists trained by Reich, were not enjoined by the injunction. They were free to do whatever they wanted with organ energy. The unconstitutional injunction gave the FDA the right to destroy accumulators and Reich's books on five separate occasions, the FDA supervised the destruction of accumulators and the burning of Reich's books. Welcome to Nazi Germany. Accumulators were destroyed June 5, 1956 and on June 26, 1956, some of Reich's, Reich's books were burned. And on July 23, 1956, more books were burned. Then, on August 23, 1956, in New York City, the FDA supervised the burning of six tons. That's six tons! of Reich's books. As recently as March 17, 1960, more of Reich's books were burned. Liberals rarely burn books. Book burnings are associated with Nazi Germany or the Soviet Union. To many of us, books are sacred things. No government agency in America has the right to burn books. Governments burn books to suppress knowledge, and this is deserving of punishment. Those conservatives who attacked Reich escaped punishment. The mistakes made by the court and the FDA in the Reich case were deliberate and should have been punished. There was no accountability. No one took responsibility for his wrong actions. They all escaped justice. A United States attorney who prosecutes illegally and makes deliberate mistakes must be held responsible and not be protected by law. This allows him to wield power arbitrarily. The Reich case would make good reading in law school to illustrate how the government can manipulate the justice system to achieve the result it wants. Today, the FDA harasses, uses SWAT teams, and jails innocent nutritionists, health food store owners, and complimentary doctors. The FDA is at war with advocates of health. 
the powers that be, were allowed free reign in the right case, and the American public sat on its lazy collective ass as it always does. During the 1950s, the government acted as though it had a mandate from the people to convict all who came before the courts. No innocents got arrested was the motto. To be continued, the end. To learn more about how to defeat a conservative, go to www.newslettercensored.com. Thank you for listening. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.